Hello there, children. Oh, I suppose I do have time. I'm, I guess you're here for the tour of my, one of my great farms, as my herd with sheep. I usually do have little bunnies out, but not today. You see, I do have to go to a dinner party in about five or so. So, well, I, I, I'll do a ten minute one, I guess. Let me start. Well, I suppose you guys already know who I am, but if you don't, my name is Beatrix Potter. Now, I know you know what I do. Well, if you don't, I write storybooks. You know, Peter Rabbit, Jemima Puzzle Duck, Jeremy Fisher, those. You've read them, I'm sure you have. They're quite popular. Anywho, let me begin. Well, my childhood was frankly quite dull and boring, and there was nothing much to do at my house. My parents were very, very rich. Now, can you imagine a room about this size? Yes, that was my bedroom. I know, it's large. But, <laughs> imagine staying in that room to the time you were about 39 years old. I mean, yes, I can go out and I can take walks with my nanny, Miss Mackenzie, and my teacher, Miss Hammond, taught me how to read and write, but what fun is that? I mean, reading and writing. I mean, apparently I did enjoy writing, but still, you know, being locked up in your room with bars on your window, that's not quite of you. And so, you learn to live with it, though. Anyway, I liked to draw and play with my dolls when I was little, and that was about it. And until my brother Bertram came about, I was about eight years old when, well, when he was two. And really, other than my nanny and my teacher, Miss Hammond, he was my only company. <coughs> well, not counting my mouse, Hinkamoka, but she's a mouse. So, <laughs> anyway. My childhood was quite dull other than that, so you get the picture. Anyway, I began writing more and more and more, and soon enough I grew to be in my 30s, as everyone else does, and I wrote Peter Rabbit, which I got it from my pet Peter Rabbit, who was quite a wonderful bunny, and he let me sketch him, and he was calm, and he was good. So, anywho, I drew my bunny, and I decided to write a story, and I just called it Peter Rabbit, and one day my mother said I could go out because now I'm old enough I should be able to leave the house well I'm in my 30s for Pete's sake so I went out and I walked past a bookstore and I said see these books here why can't my books be like that flying off the shelves and making me money I mean my parents were already rich and we already lived in this giant house but I wanted more money I guess I suppose and yes so I went back and I grabbed my book over here and I took it and I slammed it down on the desk and I said, see this book here? Can you publish it? I know it's a bit small and it's a child's book, but you have plenty of child's book. What will one more hurt? No, Mr. <coughs> Frederick of Frederick Warning Co. and his younger brother took one look at it and they frowned. Now, I wasn't too pleased when I saw this expression on their face, but, you know, I just did my girlish charm and I said, why don't you please take one more look at my beautiful book? And, you know, they published it. Well, not them. They was they said, well, it's just a little child's book, so, you know, we're gonna have your younger my younger brother publish it to you. <coughs> now, I was quite angry. These were men in their forties and fifties, and they wanted their thirty year old brother to publish it. But I didn't argue. So, Mr. Frederick Warren and Co. had their younger brother, Mr. Norman Warren, publish it. And actually, I quite liked Norman Warren, and his sister became my best friend. So, and her name was Millie, and she was quite wonderful. And although we always did talk about how great it was being single, that was our main topic. But, so, <laughs> anyway, one day, my parents do a Christmas party. And although they didn't really like Norman, because he was in the lower class, they let him come, and they let his sister come. So... They came to the party, and I gave Mr. Norman Wan the beautiful picture of Peter Rabbit, and and he loved it, because I drew him a picture of Peter Rabbit and his family sitting by the fireplace. And he got down on one knee, and he said, Beatrix Potter, will you marry me? And, of course, me and Millie always talking about how great it was being single, I ran away. <laughs> and I told Millie, you know, your brother just proposed to me. And she took my hand, she said, Beatrix Go for it. He's a wonderful man. So, I did. Well, I have one sad part to this story, though. About two months into our, well, I guess you could call it engagement, we, um, my family and I, well, let's just say we had to go on our annual...
annual summer vacation, and it used to be in Scotland, but now it was in New Story near Ambleside. So, anyway, we went to our annual vacation, and sadly that was the last I saw poor Norman standing at the train waving goodbye in the rain. Well, I got a message from his sister Millie. While standing under the gazebo, I read it, and I found that Norman had grown very ill, and we didn't find out till later that he had leukemia. And, well, I raced home as fast as I could, and I opened the door when I got to Millie's house, and we both started crying. And the words I could utter was, I'm too late. And then I ran back home, and I locked myself in that horrid house, and upstairs in number two Bolton Gardens, and I stayed there for a week. The only time I would eat was when food was pushed under my door. <sighs> yes, it was quite sad, but Millie eventually talked me out of it, and now, me being 39, I decided that I was going to move out of my parents' house. So, we decided that I should get far away from this place, so we went and, well, I did actually, she wasn't really there, but we decided that I should own a farm, since my parents hated me being dirty and all, and they would barely let me out of the house anyway. So, I wanted to get away. So, I went to New Story, and I bought myself a farm, a beautiful, beautiful farm. It was called Hilltop, because it was up on top of a hill. <laughs> so, anyway, we bought the farm, and my finance monitor, Mr. William, here. Now, he was quite a charmer, actually, and just unexpectedly, he proposed to me as well. And, well, him being a finance manager, I mean, he wasn't quite wealthy either, but, you know, I didn't care what my parents said, and so I married him anyway. And we decided, well, we own a farm. We need to think of something to put on this farm. And, you know, we wanted an endangered species. So we flipped around and we looked in newspapers and there was a sheep called the Herdwick sheep. Now, this Herdwick sheep is not a normal sheep, you see. It has curly horns instead. And yes, meat is equally good and the wool is equally good as well, but they're rare. And you know, I ended up having 17 farms and 18 cottages, which I later donated to the National Trust, because I love nature. And people still see me as a nature lover, and, and a lover of animals and children, and yeah. So anyway, we ended up having the farm, and raising the sheep, and just being in love. And we lived quite happily, actually. The, the life we had was near perfect, and really not much was going on at the time, I mean, well, not at least where I lived, and me and William really didn't have much to do with it, so life was good, and um, I lived to be actually 77, and in 1943, before I died, I was elected the very first woman president of the Herbert Sheep Breeders Association, which, keep in mind, this is a huge deal, <laughs> so I'm remembered for that and my stories. So, that's about it. Is there any questions, anybody? Well, if you could change anything during your lifetime, what would it be and why? Oh, I think I would have went back and, before I got on that train, I probably would have stayed with Norman, so I could have been there to hold his hand and tell him I loved him and say goodbye before he died, because he died when I wasn't there, and I never got to say goodbye, I mean, other than the train, but I didn't know he was going to die. So, <laughs> that's probably what I would change, go back and be with him.